So, has, has, has the time come to repent? Um, Pastor, uh, from the Seventh Day Adventists, you believe that the end is coming, not necessarily this year, but you believe it is coming. What will happen? Yeah, I believe the end is coming. What will happen is, according to the biblical record, Christ will descend from heaven with his angels, and he's coming to take those who have accepted him and been saved by his grace. Can I just, will this literally happen? It will I mean, literally happen. The, the sky there'll be will... The sign, there'll be the sound of the trumpet. There'll be the voice of the archangel. There'll be the appearance of Christ, literally, with his angels. Yeah. He's coming to take those who've accepted him and believe in him and rescue them from this earth. He's going to bring in justice and righteousness. Will the sky part? The, the, sky, the, the, the sky is going to open. According to the biblical record, the sky is going to open. He's going to descend with his angels, and he's coming to take those who have been saved by his grace. Pretty mean-spirited Christ. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, hang on, no, no, listen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're not going to be laughing soon, I'll tell you that. L listen, listen. This is, this, it says, this is all in the Bible, isn't it? It's in yes, Revelations it's in and Thessalonians, and it's in... It's in Revelation, John, uh, it's in Thessalonians, yeah. it's in the book of John. Yeah. What happens then? What happens during the... Th there's a thousand-year thousand period. What happens then? Yeah, there's a period of a thousand years. And a thousand years begins at the coming of Christ. He comes to take those, like I said, who have been saved by his grace, mm -hmm. and those who have not accepted Christ, because God gave us, he gives everybody the provision accept. to accept the salvation that he offers free of charge. He's offered salvation free of charge for those who accept it. So it's not just Seventh-day Adventists. Not just Seventh-day Adventists. It's open to everyone. Everyone who's accepted Christ, but not Muslims or Hindus or... Sikhs. If they well, haven't Sikhs. accepted him. <laughs> yeah. Atheists. Yeah. Christ, he, he makes a statement or in the Jews. book... Jews? No, no, no. No, he makes, no. A statement, a he makes a statement in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Right. Uh, he says that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But he only takes those who believe sorry. in him. How, how, I'm how, the way, the truth. What about that? children? I'm the never... way, the truth. What about... the... Sorry, I'm coming. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No one comes unto the Father right. except through me. Except it's a radical statement. It's a, it is a radical statement. It's a radical statement. It's an okay. statement. It's, 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 it's a radical statement. It's a radical statement. Tell me about that. What would you like to sorry, say? Sorry, let me just finish. Okay. So what I say is that salvation, salvation comes through only Christ. Hmm. Salvation comes through him. So, but, okay, okay, so but until we, we, accept we, until accept we've got a until we've accept got a vision. Christ. We've got a vision, if that's the right word, of what's what's going to happen. And it's in the Bible. It's Sorry, oh, wait, is, well, no, it's in the Bible. It's <laughs> fundamentalism we're talking about, and fundamentalism produces problems in all major world religions, and it produces fun it produces problems in Christianity. You and this you're, is you're, a you're fundamental cherry picking, this is a Stephen. fundamentalist interpretation of scripture, which actually misunderstands a very poetic piece of writing in the book of Revelation. It misunderstands Paul's view that the kingdom was coming immediately, not in a thousand, two thousand years time, but that was, we now know, a misunderstanding of Paul and the early Christians. They thought Christ was coming back again. We now work on an entirely different basis in the main. It's in the New Testament. But so what? There are things in the New Testament, Nikki, which we actually have to reinterpret in the light of biblical criticism and modern understanding of scripture. And this fundamentalist approach doesn't work anymore. Quick okay, is, is, is the Antichrist here? The Antichrist. Not in the studio, I mean. I mean, is the, is it, is, uh, although I have my suspicions. <laughs> uh, it, it, on Earth. The Antichrist. The, the Antichrist is here. Uh, on Earth. Yeah. Right. But the, the, the Bible teaches. When the Bible teaches about the Antichrist, is actually speaking about the spirit. Right. Okay. Satan's emissary. The, the, the spirit of the devil. Uh, yeah. anti, the, the, the Antichrist view is that the devil or the evil spirit works. In different systems, okay. In, 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 okay. Different, in different systems, Diana, Diana first of in all. different systems of the world. Diana first of so, all. And, and, and okay. Let's, let's let other people. That speak. antichrist period is a spirit of the devil. I, 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 I want to say that well as time. Seven Day Adventism grew out of something called the Great Disappointment, which was prediction that Jesus was going to come. And Seven Day Adventists and other religions that grew up out in the states, they were waiting in a field for Jesus to come. He didn't come, and they decided that the prophecy was wrong. So, uh, with respect, religious people have been wrong, obviously, every time because the world hasn't hasn't ended yet. 
yet. So if you predict the end of the world enough times, you know, eventually it's going to happen. But I would, I would ask you, you know, about what the great disappointment means for Seventh-day Adventism and how that actually came well, about. Well, end of the word, end of the word, if you, if you, read, a script, if you read a Bible, right, mm -hmm. Christ tells you in the book of Matthew 24, yeah. verse 36, he says, no one knows the day or the hour well, then that's why when. So it could be any time. So, 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 I'm coming. Yeah, I'm I want to jump in and make three points. Let me just finish. Can I just finish? Other people can speak. Yeah, right. We let let may not in. have a lot of time. I want to make three points, one, one to each of you, one right to the question. So first of all, I, I find it absolutely hilarious to describe uh, the sky as opening, because we all know if it did, there's a solar system out there. We know, we've, we've seen the structure of the universe. There isn't a heaven up there. I find it even more amazing to hear somebody like Bishop Stephen saying, oh, that's fundamentalism. You know, we don't literally believe the Bible anymore. I mean, that is bizarre. That is like saying, I believe in an all-powerful God, but I think there are some typos in the book he wrote. No, that's just not. It's that is just a it's complete nonsense, caricature finish. of what but I'm let saying. Me finish. Yeah. But let me finish. Oh, and minute, so yeah. I have one more point, which goes directly to the question, which is the question, is it time to repent? I think repentance is one of the most dangerous ideas that religion has given the world. The idea that you can do things wrong and you just say sorry. The truth is there are loads of problems with the world, and I'm not talking about gay marriage. I'm talking about the way that we pollute the environment, the way that we do all sorts of de dreadful, dangerous things to the planet. And Saying sorry isn't good enough. We have to change the way that we live and respect the environment and the planet and the science we do know about. Yeah.